Welcome back to another Vintage Diecast Restoration. Up this week, I've got a Rustin Bucyrus Crane. And this purchase was uh, was an eBay purchase. Um, I've been looking for one of these models to go on my uh, carrier truck. And uh, as they do come up occasionally, uh, the prices are typically pretty high on these. Um, I got a really good deal. I bought two models that were both sold as parts models because, as you can see, the base is broken. Um, the other model is missing the tread base completely, and you probably saw it in one of my earlier mailbag videos. But uh, this is the model that we're going to do today, and I want to try something that I've been wanting to do for a while, um, and that is a one-day build. So... We're going to try to do a very light sympathetic restoration and a fix on that broken piece. And I'm going to try to do it all in one day. So looking at our pieces here, you can see how that would have fit in originally in this model. The decals on this uh, piece are really, really good. There's You see a few little spots there on the back, but the side decals are almost perfect. Um, there's some very, very light edge wear on the model. It is loose on the base. Um, as you can see, I've already uh, pre-drilled and tapped these holes. I uh, wanted to speed things up a little bit for the purposes of the video. So um, I drilled out these rivets. You can see here on the base, a uh, few little areas where we've got some paint loss, but overall not too bad. Um, and then the main casting, you know, this is... It's going to be a bulk majority of the repair for this model is going to be figuring out how to repair that piece. So I always like to start uh, by doing just a test fit to see how well does this piece fit back together. And I'm getting a little resistance on the one side. You can see I've got kind of a little point sticking out there. But overall, this piece fits back together really pretty nicely. Um, and that's really important when you're trying to do a repair because uh, if you get something that's ill-fitting, then it's relying a lot more on the glue to hold it. Whereas if it kind of wants to go in there and it fits well on its own, um, it's a much better repair. So you can see I had to bend the one flange or one side of the flange a little bit to get it to line up. And now we've got a really nice tight fit. As far as a repair method goes, I'm just going to try to glue this. I've got a little bit of super glue and my baking soda. Um, you've probably seen this method on a lot of the other channels, and that's because it's so easy and effective. Um, it really, really works pretty well. Eventually, I do want to try uh, some of these brazing rods that I've seen used by a couple of the other restorers. I looked up uh, a starter kit is 60 bucks. And so I figured, you know what, I'm going to wait until I've got three or four models that I need some type of uh, repair to the, the casting itself before I break down and spend that. So um, we're just going to try to glue this. And you can see I put just a very light little piece of glue. And then it's really important to press it in, hold it, get it set right where that belongs. So that's had a couple minutes to go off, and you can see we've got a nice tight line there. Um, I'm going to go over that with a, another very light coat of glue and a little bit of this baking soda. Um, and this is really just to strengthen and reinforce that crack. I, I felt like I got a tight enough fit on this um, that it, it really, most of the stress in anything that would... Uh, touch that kind of boom arm hanging out there it, it's going to be transferred down into the base and that fit was tight enough that the glue is really just to hold it in place um, but it never hurts to have a little extra support and so uh, did another light layer glue and then we're going to build up over the top of that with some of this baking soda The bottom done, I'm going to turn my attention to the top, and I'm going to do the same thing up here. Um, I may actually go a little bit 
thicker, a little more liberally on the top side uh, repair. And that's because this isn't going to be seen. This is going to be up inside of that upper casting. And uh, I, I really want this to be a strong repair. You know, I don't plan on uh, giving this one to my kids to let them play with it. Um, this is going to go into my display and become a permanent part of my collection. Um, so I'm really more concerned with how it looks than the strength. But um, I do want to make this a, a good repair, a good solid repair. So uh, we'll build that up on the top side as well. So with our glue cured and set up now, I'm going to start sanding back a few of those areas uh, that didn't quite have as nice of a finish as I would have liked. I uh, got some bubbling and got uh, kind of a little build up here on the sides. The sides are really important um, because the top piece of the casting has two little flanges that actually hook under uh, little protrusions on the side of the boom. And I think it's, it's probably another flaw in the design of this casting. Um, both the thin material there at the front and then the stress that is put onto the sides of the boom by those little extensions. So I want to sand all that out so our top piece fits back nice and tight. The last step in restoring this is to touch up our paint. And I, I really felt like, you know, I don't need to strip this. I don't need to start over with it. I've already kind of sanded down and used some emery paper on all the areas where I've made a repair. Um, the yellow color, I, I'm very familiar with this color from other castings. It's almost a direct match to the tester's gloss yellow. And so that's what I'm going to use today is just straight out of the jar, gloss yellow. Uh, add a little bit of thinner to it so it'll flow through my airbrush, but we're going to use it as is with no color adjustments. We'll use our little forceps and get the casting held in place. Real light pressure on this because I don't want to damage it. And because this color match is so good, um, I don't have to do as much blending on this casting. Um, again, this isn't a complete strip and restore. This is a sympathetic restoration. And I think the main difference in that is with a sympathetic restoration, I want to try to leave as much of the original integrity to this piece as I can. So I'm going to try to focus on uh, blending over into the base piece. You can see we touched up that little red dot that was on the bottom, probably a little nail polish somebody's mom used to mark all of their models. But uh, other than that, we're going to keep it pretty straightforward um, to just the areas that we've touched up. So I'm pretty happy with the way this came out. That color match is so good, you can't hardly see where I blended. For the touch-ups on the top piece, I'm using a color you've seen me use before. Um, it's almost the exact same match to the red that Lesney used on the Nestle's Comer van, as well as the Taxi. And so I've kept a little bit of that paint that I had mixed up. It's a, a gloss dark red from Testers with just uh, one or two drops of black added into it. Um, to do the touch-ups on this, I just want to hit the areas that have some high edge wear. Um, this original casting is really in remarkable shape. As you can see, uh, it does not have a lot of chips or scratches. And so I want to go in with a really pretty dry brush. So I get a little bit of paint on it. And then I try to kind of scrape most of it off of the bristles so that uh, when I hit the casting, it's just a very, very light coat. And all I'm trying to do is just touch up 
some of those higher areas where some of that paint has worn off. Um, it's, uh, it's a very, it takes a very light touch um, because again, from the sympathetic standpoint, all I'm trying to do is just restore this back as close to original or new as I can. Um, this isn't a complete restore. And so this sort of light touch-up painting, I feel like, maintains the original integrity of this model. Nobody's going to be fooled that this is original. I've already drilled and tapped the base, but I think it's more out of duty and respect to the, these kinds of pieces that are our survivors. There's hardly anything wrong with this top casting, and so the right move to do in this case is just to touch up those few little condition areas that it has and leave as much of the rest as I can. On the base uh, for this model, I'm using a semi-gloss black from Testers. Um, the, the finish on this, I didn't feel like it was quite glossy enough to be a, a straight match with the gloss black. Um, and I'm able to go a little bit heavier hand on this because the, the chips and scratches and missing areas on this um, are all the way through to the, the base metal casting underneath. So. Um, I can build this up a little bit thicker because I want to want to hide all of those. I want them to go away. And so um, on, on this particular piece, you can see uh, it's much easier to match the black to the black. Um, and I don't have to go as dry on the brush because we are missing more of the paint. Now, I know this center ring, all this paint is going to wear away. And where that's missing... That's uh, where it rubbed against the, the top casting probably through years of, of play. Um, but I feel like, you know, again, the spirit of this kind of restoration, I, I've got the paint out and I can fix it. So I'm going to go ahead and touch up those areas as well. I really like working with the testers paint. Um, it's easy to, to mix the colors. Uh, it's pretty affordable, a couple bucks for each of these. And... Um, I just get consistently good results with it, so uh, definitely recommend testers. Now, this is probably the most tedious part of this restoration. The rear decal on this is kind of iconic to this casting. Um, it's the thing that makes it immediately recognizable as to what it is. And uh, so much of this original decal is in really, really good shape. Um, it's got a few little condition issues on a couple of these letters. And the problem with letters is, you know, we see them every day. We read. We know what that letter is supposed to look like. And so when part of it is missing, uh, it really stands out. And it, it really, you know, shows this as being in much worse condition than it actually is. And so I, I thought, you know, I could probably soak that off. I know I can get replacement decals, um, but I would know it was always a replacement. And so I decided to go a little bit different direction and use some of my cream white uh, enamel paint from Testers and the finest tip brush I've got and as much patience as I could muster 
to just go in and touch up some of those missing areas on these letters. With all of our pieces touched up, coming out of paint, you can see our, our black base really turned out nice. Um, that looks like new. The, uh, the crane base here, um, you can see you can hardly see that repair. Um, the color match on the paint was really good on this, and I was able to get it back as close to original as I can. Um, this top piece, as you can see, it's got these little flanges on each side that kind of tuck in underneath that point, and I've got to be really, really careful with this. I wasn't uh, able to get that all on camera. I, I was worried I was going to end up breaking that base piece off again, um, but I was able to get it on successfully. Uh, and you can see how delicate those little tabs and kind of how they fit underneath the front piece of the boom casting is, uh, the way that all fits together. So uh, very, very delicate operation. Just didn't feel like I could do it and do it well on camera. Um, but we've got our base piece here. I'm going to go ahead and get... I, I use the M2 screws. Um, these are a, a hex tip, and I ordered this little screwdriver to go with them. I've got links for all the stuff that I use. I've, I've had a few people ask questions and comments uh, in the comment section below about uh, where do you get this tool or where do you order these decals or I've had them send me uh, messages on our Facebook page and I've got all the links there. Um, it's no secret and uh, everything that I use I think is pretty standard among a lot of the different restorers. So. Um, links for where you can order all this stuff are, are down in there, but uh, pretty straightforward here. Um, I want to make sure that the base fits down over that flange before I get the screw in tight. I don't want to go too tight uh, because I still want this to be able to move. It's meant to move. And so we'll get that in just to a touch tight and call it good. Now this model never really had any treads, but I was able to order replacement treads for this um, and honestly I ordered them so long ago because I've been waiting to do this I don't remember where I got them from um, it was one of the, the main uh, suppliers I, I used about three or four different ones um, and it I know it was one of them <laughs> but I really uh, I don't remember where I ordered these from but they're uh, really good quality it's almost a perfect fit getting on here I uh, had to do nothing to them straight out of the box and put them onto the casting. So that's going to finish us up. So here we have our sympathetic restoration of the Lesney Matchbox number M4A Rustin Bucyrus 22RB Excavator. So this model looks, I think, as good as it did in 1959 when it was made. The uh, casting really turned out nice. Um, it was fun to do this all in one day and get it shot and get it done. Um, I may try in the future to do uh, a few more of these one day builds. So if you like this format and doing it, uh, be sure to let me know down in the comments below. Um, this was uh, kind of challenging. The first sort of casting uh, repair that I've had to make, but really happy with uh, how well everything turned out and how well the, the paint touch-up matched on this model. And uh, really pleased with that rear decal. Um, that was a lot of work. It's very tedious. Uh, definitely takes a steadier hand than I usually have. And I think it turned out pretty amazing. So as always, if you enjoyed this video, give us a like down below. If you want to keep up with us, hit, click that subscribe button. And uh, I am still missing a box for this model. So if anyone has any leads on an original box, no matter the condition it's in, uh, shoot me a comment or leave me a link uh, below. As always, uh, join us next week for another vintage diecast restoration.